Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mr. Bryce with Susquehanna Valley High School in Conklin, New York. And today we're going to do some Regents Review with Common Core Algebra 1. The topic is functions and graphs. This is what the worksheet looks like. It also looks like Regents Review number five. Show all work. No work equals no credit. Which graph does not represent a function? Well, three of them are a function because remember, for every x, there is only one y. So if you take a look at all of these, for every x, there's only one y. For that x, there's only one y. For this x, there's only one y. For this x, there's only one y. For this x, there's only one y. So for every x, there's only one y there. If I go here on x, it's only that y. If I go here on x, it's only that y. <clears throat> so what we can see here is choice four is the one that is not a function. Because for that x, is it going to be this y or is it going to be that y? we have two y's that we go to. Am I going to go up or am I going to go down? So that is why it fails the vertical line test. Also, for every x, there's only one y. That x has two different y's. And there's lots of spots. We could have picked that x or that x or that x there. Number two, when 3x squared minus 1 fourth x minus 4 is subtracted from 5 halves x squared minus 3 quarters x plus 1 from from means first. So that means we got to write that down on top. Show your work here. 5 halves x squared minus 3 fourths x plus 1. And then we subtract. Fortunately, we already have a common denominator. We line up the x's. And when we subtract, we don't just subtract the first term. Remember, when we subtract fractions, they already have a common denominator. So we just subtract the numerators. 5 minus 3 is 2 over 2. x squared. Then we subtract 3 fourths minus negative 1 fourth. Minus negative 1 fourth is like negative 3 fourths plus 1 fourth. So you can type it into your calculator if you want, but it is minus 2 fourths x and then positive 1 minus negative 4 is positive 5. That doesn't look like one of our choices, but it is. So first of all, it's positive 5. Now, 2 over 2 is 1. 2 over 4 is the same as 1 half. So choice two is the correct answer. No work, no credit. Number three, the graph below represents the function y equals f of x. What is the domain? The domain is the x values. So there are several ways to write this. The x values go all the way from negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five, to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So you can write from negative 5 to 8. Notice that these are filled in, filled in. So it's negative 5, comma, 8. That's interval notation. And set builder. The set of all numbers x such that now x is in between so negative 5 is less than or equal to x which is less than or equal to 8 and close it what is the range of this function the range is the y value the smallest y is there the highest y is there. We're not going by the beginning and end. We're going from the smallest to the largest. 
So we have negative 1, 2, 3, negative 3, and positive 2. They are filled in. When you're like, is that filled in? Yes, it's not an open circle, so it is filled in. We can also write it as negative 3 to 2. And in set builder notation, all numbers what? I think I said that range is the y. All numbers y such that y is still in between. So negative 3 is less than or equal to y, which is less than or equal to 2. And close your set builder notation. Let's go on to the next page. Find the product 2x minus 3 and x squared minus 7x plus 3. So you can set it up like that and do the rainbow method. Or if you remember last year, Miss Cody showed you the area model. So we put 2x minus 3 there, x squared minus 7x plus 3 there. And you ask yourself, what's 2x times x squared? And that's what goes here. Remember, x times x squared is x cubed. And then in this blank here, what do we do? We do 2x times negative 7x minus 14x squared. The next one is 3 times 2x is 6x. Then we go to this row. And ask ourselves, negative 3 times x squared is negative 3x squared. Negative 7 times negative 3 is 21x. Don't forget the variable. 3 times negative 3 is negative 9. Now you can always combine the ones on diagonal. 2x cubed minus 17x squared plus 27x minus 9. It doesn't have it as f of x or as y, so that is the final answer. Number 5. Solve the compound inequality. State the solution and graph the solution on the, on the graph below. Four points. Let's focus on that one right now. Let's solve it. Um, hmm, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? There's two ways to go in this direction. I could divide everything by 2, but most of you are going to distribute 2x minus 8 is greater than negative 10. Add 8 to both sides. 2x is greater than negative 2. Divide by positive 2, so x is greater than negative 1. That is stating the solution to the first half. I'm going to bring down the word and. And now I'm going to distribute for the other one. Negative 10x plus 5. Negative 10x plus 5 is greater than or equal to negative 12. I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides. I'm doing the opposite operation. That's called the additive property of equality. Negative 10x is greater than or equal to negative 17. When I divide by a negative number, I do what? Dividing by a negative number, I do what? x is less than or equal to positive 1.7. I change the direction of the inequality when I divide by a negative number. So stating the solution is right there. If I have to do it in set builder notation, I'll do it as soon as I graph it. The first thing that I notice, uh, the green one, is x is greater than negative 1. It's an open circle on negative 1. And x is less than or equal to 1.7. So here, it's going to be filled in circle at 1.7. Does 0 make it true? Is 0 bigger than negative 1 and less than 1.7? Yes. So I do shade in between. 
with ands, you're always going to be shading in between. Now I said, after I do this, I'm going to do set builder notation. Since this is shaded in between, you do all numbers X such that X is in between. So that's why I wanted to know. It's an open circle, so I don't, I just leave it as a less than. It's a closed circle on the right-hand side, so I leave the right-hand one as a less than or equal to, and it's 1.7, and the number over here, sorry, was negative 1. If you have any questions on how to do that, just ask me in class. Here's the last question. As soon as you're done reading the question, you should realize, other than the fact it's a six-point question, needs a lot of work, this is an, a simultaneous equation problem. Most farm stand sold a total of 165 pounds of apples and peaches. I have two variables, apples and peaches. She sold apples for $1.75 per pound and peaches for $2.50 per pound. Okay, I still have apples and peaches. If she made $337, how many pounds of peaches did she sell? So I know that I have 175 pounds, and I know that we made $337.50. So the first equation, let me see, if I add up the number of pounds of the apples and the number of pounds of the peaches, it had better equal 165 pounds. And the other equation, apples were $1.75 and peaches were $2.50. So $1.75 per pound times the number of pounds plus $2.50 per pound for peaches had better equal the total amount of money $337.50. When we're doing a coin problem or a ticket problem, this is the standard way to do it. There are two ways to solve this. We can do it using substitution. We can do it using elimination. Let's do it using substitution. I'm going to subtract P from both sides. So everywhere I see an A, I can write 165 minus P. That's what this means. Everywhere I see an A, I can write 165 minus P. Well, guess what? 1.75 is not an A, but the next thing is, so I write 165 minus P inside parentheses, plus 250P equals $337.50. Distribute and combine like terms. So I distributed. Now I'm going to combine the like terms. When I combine the like terms, um, this is 288 dollars or 288.75 here. So I just combine those, I get positive 0.75. Now I am going to remove the 228.75 from both sides. So I have 0.75p equals 48.75. When I divide by 0.75, I get P equals 65, and you think you're done, but that's just the peaches. Apples equals 165 minus P. The P was 65, so apples is 165 minus 65, or the apples 100 pounds. That's it for this review worksheet. If you have any questions, make sure you ask me in class. Have a great day.